Hello, hello, and welcome. Happy Friday to everybody. So we have had just shy of $20,000 in sales since my last high what sold, which was done on March 11th. So in this video, I'm going to show you all of the high dollar what sold since that last video. If you are wondering what it takes to get to $20,000 in sales a month, I am also going to discuss that with you in this video as well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so a full disclosure first, 20,000 in sales is not $20,000 in profit. 20,000 in sales for me equates to about 10,000 in profit. So we run about 50% profit margin, meaning half of whatever amount I tell you on all of my videos is actually profit. For me, I have a business model doing higher dollar what sold like those that I am getting ready to show you, as well as those everyday bread and butter items for five, 10, 15, $20. Not everyday high dollar stuff will sell. Therefore, for me, I want to have that lower dollar kind of item base to offer and have a good mix. And if you say, I don't find stuff like this, I'm not finding stuff like this to you, I say you need to look somewhere else. So if you are searching at thrift stores and garage sales, maybe you need to switch it up, start going to estate sales, look at online auctions. The stuff is out there, I promise you, I find it very, very regularly. You just have to increase your knowledge base so you know these higher dollar items and then you have to look a little bit more. So let's go ahead and get started. So first here, what I'm going to show you is that our sales over the last 31 days have been $15,091.81. Again, this is a little over a month that I am showing you, and it was a $19,000. We had a $3,000 sale day, which you will see those items that sold. The last week we are down, we are $1,894. Our average is $2,500 because we do average about $10,000. But you can still see with that one amazing $4,000 sales day, we are still doing $15,000 overall for the last month. Now, if I take a look down here, our impressions are up. Our click-through rate is break-even. Our sales conversion rate is down a little bit. So... I don't overly pay too much attention to that, but just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. All right, so we are going to start off with this vintage Weiss sign clear rhinestone statement brooch. Now you can see I did put large, I did put a state, and this one here I will make big for you so that you can see the pictures that I take. I want to show different angles and show them exactly how sparkly this brooch is. And it sold for just under $50. Now you can see the Weiss here on this picture, but I still zoom in closer to make sure that I show them that actual stamp. This one I paid $5 for. It was listed in October. So it did take about five months to sell. And I believe I took an offer of $40 on this one. And then we have this vintage hula pie plate. I got this at my little local thrift store. Store. I paid $3 for it. It was listed on March 14th and it sold really, really fast. I have been told there are different brands of these. So just keep an eye out for these Hula Pie plates. Mine was Syracuse. You can see I do zoom in and show Syracuse China and the number. I also show the measurement of the plate. This sold in less than a month, really, really fast. So if stuff is different like this and catches your eye, definitely look it up. And then this one, I have vintage signed by artist Kim, K-Y-M. It was a silk painting. It was an 18 by 13. I picked this up at an online estate auction. I paid less than $5. It sold for $38.99. Now, this one did take about six months to sell, but... A pretty good profit coming in at about $30. Here is the signature on the bottom. That one was really easy to read. I do show the back. I will tell you if I were not able to read that signature, I just would put artist signed. And again, about a $30 profit. All right, next up is this North Face 
backpack. I picked this up at Goodwill. If you see here, has dirt and stains, have not tried stain removal, but overall good condition. So cosmetically, this bag was dirty. You can see some staining and dirt down on the bottom, but as far as the actual bag and the integrity of the bag, it was in great shape. I did not want to take the time to try and remove these dirt stains. I listed it a little bit lower than my competitors and it sold for $45.49. So it was about a $32, $33 profit and this sold in under a month. All right, next up is a vintage shadow line nightgown. If you're not looking at nightgowns at the thrift store, definitely keep an eye out. I only paid a dollar for this and it sold for a best offer of 45. It is over a $40 profit. This is laid out on carpet is how I take it. Zoom in close to show the lace. Here is the tag showing it a shadow line medium made in the USA and there is the back. So this one sold in about five months in a $40 profit. This one was an international sale. There are actually quite a few auctions in my high dollar sales this past month. And this is one of them. This one I started at $49.99. I got one bid, which is all I need. I only have $5 into the Stein. And somebody said the four tenths might've been the leaders. I am unsure if four tenths was liters or if this was a limited edition. I did show the top, here is the side, as well as the height. I want the buyer to see every single angle and know the measurements on it. You can see here at the bottom, it was signed. It says FR Volner, I believe. And this one, I got the one bid. I got the one bid. Again, that's all I needed. Paid $5 over a $40 profit. The nice thing about auctions, and I do not do them too often. You really need to kind of know that you have something popular that you'll have enough interest in. But the nice thing about auctions is that your stuff sells really fast. Up next is a Harley pen. So the majority of the Harley pins going out, and I will tell you, we have been selling three to four to five per day, and we still have over 350 to list. I think we have about 250 listed right now, and we have 600 total, but I research every one because some of them will catch me off guard. There were a ton of 100-year anniversary pens, but there weren't many 85th anniversary, which is what this one was. This one sold in under a week. It sold for $45. I am about a dollar in. This is another $40 profit. I also have listed a pen that comped out at over $280. So hopefully that one will be in the next high dollar what sold. So for my Harley pens, I show the front. We show the back. Now we do, again, we zoom in. We want them to see where it was made. We want them to see the stamp. And then we also take a picture with the tape measure. Next is this Kangle hat. This is another Goodwill fine. I paid $2.50 for this at Goodwill. It sold for $59.99. It is over a $50 profit. Now, it's hard to see in photos, but when I saw this in person, I knew it was an excellent made hat. I could just tell it was a higher quality. And it did have the tag, as you see here. So we do show that it is kids large. We do show a close up of the tag. The main thing I'm wanting them to see here is that it is for six to 10 years of age. And this one sold in under a month as well and over a $50 profit on a hat. Next, this one I believe I took a best offer of 50. This one did take over eight months to sell. This is a beautiful Bulacante. And if you're unsure what Bulacante is, it's these controlled bubbles. You can see they are spaced exactly the same distance apart. That is how you know you have a Bulacante piece. This one I paid about $5, so it's about a $40 profit. Again, it took a while to sell. I could have priced it lower and probably sold faster, but it was a very, very nice piece. And I definitely feel it was well worth it three and a half inches you can see here again taking measurements with the tape measure to show my buyer the exact size of the item and not a bad $40 profit all right there's a story behind these mugs there's a story behind these mugs these mugs sold for $51 
I am about $5 into them. They are about a $40 profit. And I received a negative feedback on these mugs. And I actually contacted eBay about it because I'm going to show you the pictures here of these mugs just so you can see exactly what the buyer saw. They definitely were vintage made in England. So they're two and a quarter inch high by two and a quarter inch wide. Now, if you look at my title here, it does say Dimitas. So Dimitas is a smaller version of a teacup or a coffee mug. And this buyer, even though I had the photos I just showed you, showing these cups were only two inches each, expected to get full-size coffee mugs. They left me negative feedback. And I actually reached out to eBay. I said, look, it says Dimitas in my title. It also shows a picture with the tape measure showing these are two inch mugs and eBay removed it. So this was a $40 profit. They did leave me negative feedback. They did not ask to return the mugs or I gladly would have accepted it. And I got the negative feedback removed, kept my money and they are keeping their little that they did not know mugs. Up next is a Kachina, and some of you have been asking for me to do videos on these because I do sell quite a few of them. This one was listed in July, so it did take about eight or nine months to sell. I only paid about $10 for him, so he's about a $40 to $45 profit. This one here I will show you up close. He is missing some feathers in his hand. This one does have a removable mask so i definitely want to show him without his mask so they see the mask comes off this one i didn't take a picture of the bottom and the reason i did not take a picture of the bottom was because he was not signed if he were signed i would have taken a picture of the bottom sometimes i still will take a picture of the bottom but i don't feel it's as important if there is no signature there and this one, again, these can be longer tail. Actually, most of them probably are. Took about nine months, but he was about a $40 profit. Right. This is a really cool tablecloth. I got this in a buyout for $5. I took a best offer of $55, so it's about a $45 profit. It is from the 80s. It is Bulgarian muslin. And you can see here that it has like the couple this is definitely a good one for thanksgiving with the hearts and i do zoom in close to show there's a little bit of discoloration not a ton but i want them to see like here there's a little spot so if there are any flaws on your linens definitely zoom in and show them this one was listed in september so again another longer tail item which is why i feel it's important to have those smaller bread and butter items because this tablecloth took about nine months to sell and while i'm waiting on that to sell i need to have other stuff to sell once you build up your store though you will have regular high dollar as well as your bread and butter items sell Next, this one I kind of pushed my luck on because having a crystal vase without being named, it is a very, very hard to sell. So you can see I put cut thumbprint circles. I do zoom in and show that. This one sold for $45. I paid about $5, so it's about a $35 profit. There are the thumbprints here, and it did take almost a year to sell this took almost a year to sell so it took a while i got this in a auction lot this is not something i would pick up typically with clear crystal if i don't know the maker or it's not signed i am probably going to leave it behind Great, right, we have another brooch this is another crown trifari you can see i do put brush gold faux pearl it is a leaf it does have the braided rope so that is in my title this one i took a best offer of 40 so i did go down i am less than five dollars in it is about a 30 dollar profit again show with the tape measure show a close-up of the back with the stamp and this one took about five months to sell right Mr. Mighty Key. So this is a Northwestern potter. I bought about 60 pieces of his pottery. You're going to see quite a few coming up here. This one, I took a best offer of $55. I paid about $12 a piece. So this is about a $35 to $37 profit. Beautiful, beautiful bowl here. And you can see it is signed Mighty Key on the bottom. Very easy to read. This one had a chip. It had a chip. It still sold for $50. 
absolutely amazing sale. And somebody who saw that I had all his pieces was nice enough to send me photos of Mr. Mydeke. So I do include those if I remembered when I was listing these. And again, this is a really great sale. Watch for pottery that is signed. If you can read it, look it up and that way you can comp it. And this one sold in under two months. Right, now we have a vintage Harley Davidson sterling silver bracelet. I picked this up when I was out with Mark, OG, and Z at Renninger's Flea Market. I paid $20 for it. I accepted a best offer of $75, so it's about a $45 profit. You can see the Harley Davidson motorcycles there. I do zoom in on that, and I'm also showing that it is OLP here, and this one I did not see a 925 on, but we did test this to confirm it was sterling and it was about a $45 profit. It did sell in about a month, so it sold pretty fast. So I've been having some really good luck with this Harley stuff. Next, this thing took almost two years to sell. You know, I'm trying to learn the artwork and a lot of what I'm learning is that it's longer tail. Now I did take a offer of $45 on this. I paid five. It's about a $35 profit, but because I'd had it almost two years, I just wanted to get it gone. Picked it up at an estate sale. It's a really, really cool print and it was named J. Keith. So I was able to comp it. I really was hoping to get more for it. But with having had it so long, I was happy to get an offer. You can see here, it does have some water damage to the back. It did not transfer through to the front, but I made sure to zoom in and show the buyer that it did have it. I also show who framed it. And again, about a $30, $35 profit. With these bigger photos, you can see this one is 20 by 30. We do use TV shipping boxes, which cost about $10. So that cuts into the profits with these. And I am really, really trying hard not to pick up any art unless it will sell for over $100 in the future. Right. There were actually two of these sold. You can see zero available, two sold. I paid about $40. This is a 2003 Swarovski snowflake ornament. Some of these ornaments are worth hundreds and hundreds. Uh, typically, your 1990s, which are the first ones that were made, are going to be the more expensive ones. But I am happy with a $40 profit on two of these. They sold in under a month. I got these from an online auction. So keep your eye out for the Swarovski crystals. I have found these at yard sales. I have found them at online estate auctions. So they, they are definitely out there. I have seen people find them at the thrift store. They do all have the little hang tag with the years. So even if you found this without the box, you would be able to identify the year it was from. They do tend to sell a little bit better with the box. So up next, this is an antique bubble convex glass. So I picked up 14 of these from a personal buy. I've had people ask me how I find the personal buys. This one and... One of the others that I have had, people have reached out to me via email that have seen me on YouTube. So that is one of the benefits of me having my channel. I picked up 14 of these for $250. So I'm just under $20 into each. This one's going to be about a $60 profit. And I price these because they had some damage. You can see it says read DMG. I was just shortening damage. And I priced upon the subject matter. So this one is kind of plain. That's why I did price it lower. You're going to see some that I did price higher. Now, this one also has a rip here on her shirt. And I wanted to make sure the buyer saw all of these little cracks on the picture as well. And I zoomed in really, really close on this tear. If you have a flaw, you need to make sure, again, to show that flaw and zoom in, make sure you accent it. But still, this was a good profit and it sold in under a month. Some tactical glasses. So I got these off of a online auction. I paid about $30 for them. And I took a best offer of 100, so I made about $50 to $60 profit on these. They did take about a year to sell. Now, if you're wondering how I looked them up, I had 
a picture of this Smith Optics case, a field kit. And I did decide to put them all together because I wanted to get a higher dollar profit. Somebody asked me if they could buy just one set of these. I did tell them no. Took about six months. Not, not horrible as far as how long it took to sell. And definitely a good profit. And these are really easy to ship. This is another item from my personal buyout. I'm about $5 in. I will tell you with the Willowware, you have to really, really pay attention to the brand, to what the piece is. A lot of different companies made this. This one actually was not branded. So you can see I just put Antique Cobalt Blue Willowware Oyster Plate. I was able to find a comp on this really fast. This one sold for $116 and it sold in under a day. It sold very, very fast. There were none listed. There were two sold, which is definitely something I like to see. So if you see none listed and multiple sold, that should indicate to you that that item probably will sell pretty fast because people are looking for it. So on this one, I showed the front. Also with the tape measure, there is the back. And actually my friend Charlene listed this. This one is over a hundred dollar profit that sold really, really fast. I was about $5 in, in the personal buyout. Now, some of the other Willowware pieces I picked up are just bread and butter, 10, 15, $20. So again, definitely check the exact piece that you have if you're looking for prices. All right, here's some more auctions. This is a Harley Davidson. This is a pocket watch, or actually it's not a pocket watch. I'm very confused. So what I did now is I put pictures of the watch. Luckily this buyer has got the watch and I added in pictures of it, the other watch, which should not have been in here. And this got one bid for $99 here is zoomed in the close-up of the watch in the back and that should have been the end of the pictures but somehow i put the other two must have been tired when i was listing this but again an auction this was rare i was hoping for more than one bid but i only got one i'm happy with one bid i'm less than 30 dollars into this this is over a 50 dollar profit and again with an auction it sells really fast in seven days and it was gone this one is an item that I picked up from, I want to say from an online estate sale, but I didn't bid on it. So when you go to pick up online auction wins, sometimes they have stuff there for sale. This got no bids and I don't know how I missed it. This was a 1979 RC Gorman. RC Gorman can sell very, very high. This one I got $100. You can see best offer accepted. This did go out to a viewer. Thank you again for your purchase. And this is absolutely beautiful. And you can see here it is signed RC Gorman 1979 with the tape measure. This was just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful piece. And I don't know how I missed it. I didn't bid on it, but nobody else did. So I picked it up for $5 and this is about an $80 profit. And it sold it in under a month. We're running out of crabs. We're running out of crabs. I listed this Joseph of Hollywood crab brooch on my birthday. So it did take about six months to sell. I did take a best offer of $110 which I'm not sure why some of the best offers are showing up here. Some of them are not. So this one sold lower in comparison to my other one I had because the nameplate had fell off. So you can see here on the back where it was, but it was missing. So this one took a lot longer. My other one that I sold very, very fast. This one took about six months, sold for 110. I paid two dollars for this brooch and it is very close to a hundred dollar profit right here is another auction so this is a little omega slide this is another estate find you can see i put have not had stones checked for authenticity i did not check these these could be diamonds if they are great for whoever bought them that is not something i am set up to do 
I only paid about $5 for this. Started on auction at 50. I would have been happy with one bid. However, this one got 16 bids and it went up to 124.50. So it is over a hundred dollar profit. And again, sold in seven days because it was an auction. So why did I choose to put it on auction? Well, for one, it was 14 carat. I knew that precious metal is going to sell and I couldn't find the exact one. So I wanted to just put it up there. I was happy if I got $50, but I'm definitely happy I got 124. Another Swarovski ornament. This one was a 2002. Two of these sold at 148. You need to make sure that you are checking the year. These were about an $80 profit each. I sold two of them. You can see the 2002. I would say, Typically, the older are worth more, but that's not necessarily the case. Now, I am showing the box because the box did not match the ornament. It wasn't a 2005 box, but the ornament was actually 2002. So I had the little paper showing 2002, but the actual box was from 2005. So again, over an $80 profit, had two of these. These were another online auction that I won these from and keep your eye out for these little crystal ornaments. Next, this is a Walt Disney Classic Collection WDCC. This is Geppetto's Toy Hut. This is from 1998. You can see here it says read. Now I paid about $40 for this, so this is over a $100 profit. I did not notice when I was bidding, this little goose's head is missing and I will show you how I showed the buyer. So I did zoom in close to show some of the corners and the cute little nooks and crannies, but I also showed this lovely goose's head missing. I did try to super glue it, guys. I tried to super glue it back. It would not stay. I said, forget it. I just included it with it, made sure I showed that it was missing, and it still sold for over $150. So if items are rare and they have a minor flaw, necessarily scared to pick them up. If there are a ton of new ones, then I would hesitate to pick up one that is flawed. Here's another one of the oval bowed bubble glass. Again, paid about $20. This one's about an $80 to $90 profit. This one I priced higher because it had a couple. Typically, the more people in pictures, I can get a little bit more. This one also was damaged, which I do expect with the age but I wanna zoom in and show exactly where the frame has where. You can see here some paint missing. So these items will still sell. You just have to make sure that you show the flaws along with them. And this one again also sold and just right, right at a month it sold. This one was a single guy, but it was a grandpa. I mean, I, I'm assuming it's somebody's grandpa. This one just looked really cool. He looks nice in his suit. It does have some great coloring, like the blue on his eyes, the lapel pin. Again, all of these frames had damage. If they did not have damage, I could have got more for them. Unfortunately, they did. So this one's about an $80 to $90 profit. And again, sold in about a month. And these did sell, except two went to the same buyer, but one of the rest of them all went to individual buyers. And here is another one. This one I took a best offer of $150. Same personal buyout, paid $20 for this. And it is over $140 profit. This one was absolutely gorgeous. I do zoom in to show this was hand painted. And this is a really cool ornate frame. Again, I show the front, the back. I show the measurements so they can see. And sold in under a month. This sold just before I left for my first nurse flipper camp. So this Tivana set I picked up for $12 at the antique mall. So that is where I'm telling you guys, if you're not finding this high dollar stuff, you might need to look somewhere else. So this is about an $80 profit. It did take about seven or eight months to sell but definitely a great profit. Watch for Tivana, guys. Tivana can sell. I have another Tivana set up at, I believe, over $300 in conjunction with Starbucks. I do show individually the cups as well as the creamer and sugar and the bottom and make sure they can see each piece individually. When I have new items, I do like to kind of showcase them like this on the box 
where the box is included and they can see that it, it does come with the box. Right. This purse was absolutely my favorite Mandalian that I've had. You can see here, amazing bright blue and green color. Oh, chains missing if you look here at this bottom photo. Now, this one sold the offer of 150. I paid about 50, so it's about an $80 profit. This sold to a buyer with no feedback. So I want to kind of touch on that because a lot of times people message me, they're scared to accept offers from buyers with zero feedback, but you really don't need to be because. A lot of times that's people checking out as guests. They don't want somebody in their family to see it. So don't think just zero feedback is definitely a scammer or something like that. I accepted this offer. They paid. This was a good sale. And no problems, guys. So don't be scared of those zero feedback buyers. You can see I did zoom in to show the Mendelian company. It is stamped on the inside of these purses. Mendelian is one of the higher dollar brands of the flapper purses and this one look at it guys it's three and a half inches by six inches this is a small little purse i know i saw rk treasure picked one up for three dollars i have not been so lucky i did have to pay up and pay fifty dollars it did take about six to seven months to sell here is another one of the portraits again twenty dollars in about a hundred and thirty dollar profit on this one this one, I have grandma portrait. So when I title these, I think of what people would call this. And this one was an absolutely beautiful portrait. You can see here 18 by 12. And I do have that it has the bubble convex glass. And this one I put Victorian. It kind of gives me that Victorian style. And this one, again, sold in under a month as well. All right, here's the actual Harley Davidson watch that should have not been included in the other one. This was another auction. This one I started at 99, it got three bids, sold for 103.50. Again, these Harley watches are uncommon watches. I put that it needs a battery, it sold for 103.50, and you can see here. It is older, it is worn. I definitely want to make sure I zoom in and show all aspects of this watch. This one was 10 karat gold filled. It had a leather frisson watch band. Sold in seven days because it was an auction, paid about 30. This one's about a $60 profit. And then another Harley watch, again, about $30. And this one was another seven day auction started at 99 got two bids sold for 10250 so when i do auctions not only does it make sure that my item's going to sell in 7 days but it also lets me have an opportunity to make more so if i had listed this for 100 it could have sold really fast but i got 10250 i was hoping for more again didn't get a ton more show close up this one definitely is worn it is older and i want to show that this one had an alligator calf wristband another 10 karat gold plated and yeah yeah paid 30 bucks watch for harley stuff and do comps i did find comps on these watches only on worth point and that is why i decided to put them on auction all right this one took about nine months to sell this is a vintage roseville moss rick moss face it sold, I believe I took a best offer of $150. I am only about $5 in, so it's over $120 profit. I got this in a personal buyout as well. And you can see I put read in my title. You can see here there is crazing throughout this vase, which I do expect with the age. But this one also had a pretty pretty good size chip here. So I wanted to make sure I showed that. This was a rarer piece though. So I was still able to command a pretty good price. So again, if they are rare with flaws, they will still sell. And this one was well over hundred dollar profit. Favorite ones. This one, I did take a best offer of $225 because it was a repeat buyer. I know he will be back. He has come back a couple of times already. And I do still have over 40 pieces of Mighty Key pottery. So this reminded me of Lotus Flowers. I did put that in my title. 
And this is one of my favorite pieces of Mighty Key that I got. Absolutely amazing, amazing piece. This was a bigger bowl. This was a nine inch bowl. I paid 15. It sold for 225. So it's about $175 profit. And it sold in about two months. This is up higher because I sold three sets. This was almost a $300 sale. So I sold them for $97.49 per set. I had three sets. I got these for only a dollar a piece from George the Antique Nomad. I paid $12 and it was into almost $300 sale, well over a $200 profit. If you do not know yet, this is Duncan Miller Wave. Duncan Miller Wave does not sell overly high, but if you find the blue, a lot of these pieces sell very, very high. So try to remember this pattern when you are outsourcing because they are definitely great sellers and they sold in under two weeks. Right, here is another Mighty Key turquoise green. So I love his turquoise green pieces. He did not make very many. This one, I believe I took a best offer of 150. I paid 15, still over $100 profit. Again, with these Mida Key pieces, I am getting repeat buyers that are collectors. So I am a little more likely to take lower offers when I know they have bought from me before and they are likely to buy from me again. I have plenty of room for profit in this. It is still over $100 profit and again, sold in about two months. Here's some more Mighty Key. Now, this one I took a best offer of 65. So it was about a $40 profit. This was the same buyer. Again, if I accept offers from these buyers on this Mighty Key pottery, they are more likely to come back and buy some more. And I dominate the Mighty Key listings on eBay right now. I have about 40 compared to 20 from all other sellers. So I definitely want to treat my Mighty Key collectors very, very well and accept offers from them that I might not accept otherwise. All right. This is one of the buyers that bought the really pretty Lotus Bowl. I sold these for $2.25. Again, I'm taking a lot lo lower offers, but a lot of Mighty Key was priced down and I'm trying to bring the value back up. I think I am doing very well doing that. And this buyer actually wanted to return these bowls because they are not the same size. So all Mighty Key pieces are made, handmade. They are different sizes. I was under the impression that if they had the same number, they were meant to be in the same set. The buyer actually told me that means it was kind of from the same firing and not necessarily the same set. So they ended up deciding to keep these and then they bought an additional 300. So I told them I was willing to take them back, but I was not willing to pay the return shipping or reimburse the shipping to them, which was quite a bit. They are on the West Coast and they decided to keep these bowls. And because of the way I handled it, they bought more from me and hopefully they will come back and buy some more. So this was a great, about $175 profit on these three bowls. And then we have this amazing Harley Davidson, another 10 karat gold filled, but this is where worth point comes in. My other pocket watch only sold for a hundred. This was not an auction. I did this buy it now because I knew they were selling around 450 to $500. Only two like this have ever been sold. I found it. I used Google lens. It took me to worth point and I found that they were selling again, 450 to 500. I paid up. I paid $200 for this watch. I did research it before I paid that much, but this was still over a $200 profit and it sold in under a month. So using Worth Point to look up some of this rare stuff definitely pays off. It is almost a $30 a month investment, but just one sale like this, the profit that I made from this, where if I would have started this at a $99 auction, might not have went that high. And I knew that it had sold for this in the past and was able to price it accordingly. And this, just the profit from this alone will pay for a year of the point for me. Right. We are up to the top three. Two of these you probably have seen. They were in my thumbnail. 
these are the Chinese roundels. This is one of them. You can see I put one of two. You can also see I put a question mark on the period because I was not sure which period they were from. I started them at $99. I had 28 bits. They went for, this one went for $15.45. I'll show you the second one here in a moment. You can see I show up close and then I zoom in even closer. I show the back and I show it with a tape measure. That is it. So this one went to somebody in China and they paid $80 in shipping. I was not 100% sure of what I had, but I did see stuff that was similar selling for thousands of dollars. That is why I chose to put this up on auction. The reason I chose to put them up individually is that maybe somebody wanted one facing left or facing right, and you'll see the other one here actually mirrors this one. And this buyer did try to get the other one, but they were outbid. So I paid a dollar for this, a dollar in an online auction lot, did not know what I had. I do not want you guys to think I knew what I had. I absolutely did not. I just did my research and this is over a $1,400 profit that I made in seven days because it was auction. And here's the second one. So you can see this one is more faded. And I was kind of confused as to why the one that was faded went for more. Well, this buyer opened a return on me. You can see again, start at $99, 30 bids went to $1,725 because she had to outbid the buyer from China. So this one was more faded. It did have a little more wear. You can clearly zoom in and see if you put the two auctions side by side, you would be able to see this one had more wear. Well, she said I didn't disclose the wear. I felt like these pictures are high quality. You can zoom in on them, you can see. And so I told her to return it. I had no problem taking this back. I would have just thrown it up on another seven day auction. She ended up deciding to keep it. This is from the 1800s, guys. Some loss of fabric and fading is to be expected. And she got a good deal because some of these sell for $3,000. She ended up figuring that out and she canceled her return. I kept my money. This one was over a $1,500 profit. Well, of the last month was this Yadro. This is number 1350. This is a gondola. This is almost three feet long. This is a giant thing. And this one sold to a buyer in Washington, DC. So when I was going up to Pennsylvania, I took this Yadro statue with me in my car, in my trunk, and I hand delivered this to Washington, DC. I paid $800 for this. I took a best offer of $2,200. It is over a thousand dollar profit. I have one other big $3,000 piece available in my store that is a Capa di Monte Disney. And honestly, if they are within eight to 10 hours of me, I probably will drive it myself with the cost of gas. Freight cost has went up. If I had used the shipper, I would have had to pay about three to $400 to get this to the buyer. Instead, I hand delivered it myself kept that three to $400 for myself. You can't ask the buyer to pay it, but in this case, with that much profit, what I've been doing is I have been paying the use ship. Um, but again, with those increased prices, if I get another big sale like this and it's within 10 hours, I'm going to drive it myself. So again, over a thousand dollar profit on one item. This one sold to California, got canceled because the used ship driver was behind, relisted and resold in less than a month. And the buyer was happy with it. I handed it to him myself and yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed the high dollar what solds. This is over about four and a half weeks, five weeks. All of these were my own items. I told you if they were on auction or buy it now. There were quite a few auctions in this one. And those auctions are fun to do, but I think you really need to make sure you can for it. So in order to get to the um, it has taken me years of listing. I have a mix of high dollar and low dollar items in my store. We have regular sales. So in order to get to that 10, 15, $20,000 mark, 
I have about $130,000 in inventory listed. So I feel like you need to probably be about 100,000 in inventory listed to do that, unless you're getting really fast selling popular items and then you could do it with a lot less. I do feel that you could do this as a one man or a one woman show. It would just take a lot of work. I have a three year old. My voice is still a little crackly from camp. It's still a little crackly. It's not fully recovered. If you heard some sputtering there. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow night, I will be searching for items just like these for you by your zip code. Check out the $9.99 membership. Does not show up on iPad or iPhone. I am sorry to you guys. I have no way to fix that. That is all YouTube and iPhone and whatever kind of conflict they are having. So if you want to join the channel membership, you do need to go to an actual desktop computer to be able to do that. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I will see my members tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another Sourcing Live. Hopefully we'll find some good stuff and I will see you on Monday with a What Sold video. Bye for now, guys.